I really need deputies to stop hiding behind hearsay. They don't even understand what it is or that different jurisdictions have different rules. Hearsay doesn't mean evidence is fake, wrong or not fact. In the pursuit of truth, all verifiable evidence should be included. You know I had to make this video, right? I just had to. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I go by the name of Dr. Heinz Emerton. Thank you so much for, for tuning in once again for another video. To all my new subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing uh, onto the channel. Welcome to the wonderful and crazy world of Dr. Heinz Autor Express. And also to my existing subscribers, that I do check to see if you're still subscribed um, because I've been getting a, quite a few mentions saying that they've been unsubscribed for some reason without their knowledge. So do check to see um, those uh, to, to see if you're still subscribed. Uh, and also to those that are watching and not subscribing, do consider subscribing. We are releasing a lot more content um, like this and other 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 content. If you like movies, film, etc., we are we are also giving those content as well. Something I must disclaim: I am not offering legal advice in any capacity. I am also not a lawyer. I am just offering my opinions and commentary on a certain subject. So with that out of the way, let's get on to the video. This video actually came requested. I wasn't actually thinking of making a video like this at all. Um, but it came requested uh, after I shared the um, a post made by one of Amber Heard's biggest fanatic and biggest defender, Leave Heard Alone. And it was a post that I looked at and I couldn't really fathom um, how much contradictions was within one post and in the same post she says that these people don't understand hearsay i mean jesus christ it writes itself i literally saw the post it, it wasn't something i went out looking for myself i just saw it retweeted onto my timeline someone had a picture i just took the picture and shared it onto onto my timeline and tagged a friend that i knew that has uh, who is a lawyer that has actually argue with her before when she made a post regarding Amber Heard's due process being impeded or something like that and she argued with her on that one so I thought okay let me just let me, let me just share this one because she's off the rails again I didn't think I would get asked to make a hearsay video let alone people coming in to actually defend what she said and I'm just gonna quickly go back to what she actually said on the post to illustrate my point so she basically says, I really need deputies to stop hiding behind hearsay. They don't even understand what it is or that different jurisdictions have different rules. I don't, first and foremost, that's the first contradiction right there. You're hiding behind hearsay within the same post that you're saying that deputies, which is Johnny Depp supporters for those that don't know, um, that's what, that's the word that they made up for them. But she's also behinding, hiding behind hearsay and saying that different jurisdictions have different rules. I wouldn't have cared about this. I mean, that was the only part, that was the only reason why I actually tagged a lawyer to look at this. Like, it, it has to be absurd to think that different, different jurisdictions had different rules for hearsay, which is not really the case. Maybe they have different rules for the exceptions, you know, um, like, and they would allow certain evidence to come in. Um, but that's pretty much where it stops. It's pretty much a blanket rule overall, wherever you go. And the reason why this was concerning is actually because one of the defendants actually came into the into my mentions and was saying that she wasn't referring to the US or uh, or anywhere. She was just talking about different jurisdictions. The jurisdiction doesn't, doesn't mean within the state. And in my head, this was absurd because if you read the post in its entirety, it could only be limited to UK and US, not all jurisdictions uh, that, that, that are. And that was a frightening thing because the straw man was basically arguing something that no one was, was was mentioning. She wasn't clearly talking about the entire world. She was talking about a specific case, which was Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. And there were there were only two places, two countries, that this was uh, deliberated or lit litigated, I, 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 I should say. And that was the UK and the US. And even if we were to take it further, the UK has three different jurisdictions within the entire like you know the entire i'm not sure if you can call it continent per se but the british isles let me put it like that within the british isles they have three different jurisdictions england and wales fall into one jurisdiction scotland and northern ireland fall into different jurisdictions so and they and even then both of them i mean sorry all of them not both of them all of them 
have the same hearsay rule, the same um, the same exceptions. They follow the same code with just a little different uh, application of it. So I beg to, I just don't understand what she means or why you're even defending this moot point, really, because it doesn't actually bear much relevance. But that spurred me to make the video. What really, really made this to be a deep dive and not necessarily a small video, just as Gojo just going through what ASA actually is, um, because one of my followers actually requested for me to make the video, as I, as I said earlier. Um, is mainly because of the fact that someone actually said that an Harvard lawyer advisor on posts like this on legal matters, which just makes me think what Harvard lawyer would tell her that hearsay doesn't mean evidence is fake. Evidence could be fake with there's so many motive to have someone like uh, to have someone. Uh, tell someone something and something etc or you telling somebody else um something that it could not be real overall hearsay evidence is probably the most on not trustworthy evidence it's not the best type of evidence to even put forward because it's it's in its face unverifiable so when i read the fake wrong and or not fact part it got me thinking because hearsay could be faked, hearsay could be wrong, and hearsay could literally not be factual at all. And it got me thinking of examples of hearsay based on what one lawyer broke it down because I asked lawyers to actually break it down for me. I didn't think they would respond because it was such a, an idiotic post. I didn't think they would actually respond, but they did. And they gave me a breakdown. One of the lawyers was Southern Law. You should go and check him out. He has a YouTube channel, brilliant channel. Learn a lot from him. You should go check him out. Uh, I'll link him in the description below. And what he said was, was quite profound. He basically said, hearsay is not necessarily about what A told B about C. It's mainly, uh, it's mainly about out of court statements. That's all hearsay is. The other lawyer that was tagged in it basically just said, or oh, if in doubt, always take, um, always examine, always think of the effects of the statement would have on the listener. And it couldn't be more apt about that because the example that I understood ESA to mean is, uh, it's as simple as this really. Imagine you are, someone is at a, is at a crime scene and they are testifying in court and that person at a, at a crime scene said that the officer told him that Jeff killed uh, that Jeff shot um, Rob for, for 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 example so that would be considered hearsay right because it's something that the officer told um, Jeff and it cannot be corroborated or anything to opine how true this statement actually is and that goes into the factual part because we don't hearsay was made and created because we don't know the facts of what this person actually said because we weren't there. We uh, there was there's so many reasons why you know why this would be problematic to just accept just on its face value, and that's why the hearsay rule exists. Now the same scenario. Imagine the police officer now turns around and is in the courtroom and says and he's asked what happened and he says i re I, I was e i was in my car eating donuts and i received a call from dispatch and they told me that shots has been fired at admiral lane let's say that the murder scene was admiral lane shots have been fired at admiral lane so i turned on my sirens and went all the way down and got to the scene and the guy was dead so I started questioning people, etc. All those things. Now, that is not hearsay at all. Because it's not offering to prove anything. It's not offering to actually say um, this is what definitely happened or anything like that. It's just offering to prove this is why I went down there. And that's literally the day simplistic way or distinction of understanding what hearsay actually is and there is no way you can fake 
that evidence because you can easily verify it by just getting the dispatch logs and seeing if this call was made or not you can there's so many ways of going about it from my understanding of it it's more to do with why you're offering this this type of evidence in if you're going to look, look at, at, at the federal rules of evidence 8801 it basically says as just ju just like the picture that, that the lawyer that, that the lawyer gate uh you know posted with his post basically says statement statement means the oral assertion written assertion or non-verbal conduct underline that part if the person intended it as an assertion um b declarant declarant means the person who made the statement c hearsay hearsay means a statement that the declarant does not make while testifying at the current trial or hearing which is why the lawyer actually said it's an our court statement because there is it's not under oath it's not being tried so it's it's its priority or its authenticity is lower than what you would get in court that's the main idea behind hearsay there are certain exceptions to non hearsay statements like dying declarations i believe like if you're gonna say something as you're dying that wouldn't necessarily be classed as hearsay because people wouldn't really lie um when they're dying they're about to die and they're facing their own mortality so it is assumed that they wouldn't lie in in that um, situation or in, in, in situation of shock for example um you know uh where someone has witnessed something and, and is in shock and just blurted out a statement or is, or is it, i think it's called an excited statement or, or or something like that those wouldn't, wouldn't be considered as hearsay but it differs in different states or different um uh, or different jurisdictions for example and this is mainly because you know it, it, it doesn't mean the rule has changed it's just the exceptions to the rule that um that 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 would differ jurisdiction to, to jurisdiction not necessarily the rule in, in of itself so and the reason why i pointed that out is because if you're going to go back to her statement she says fake wrong yes it could be wrong he said could literally be wrong. Let's give another example of uh, Sally and Bob. And Sally was baking in the kitchen. Sally tells Bob that, um, let's say Sally tells Bob that Terry is a massive, uh, that, that, that Terry is an idiot and it kills her that she, that Terry, um, that Terry um beat his wife at chess now you may think this is ridiculous how could anyone get that wrong but let's imagine the scenario where terry is upstairs and uh, and um and and uh sally is cooking downstairs terry hearing that might not hear the chess part but hears the beats part and repeats this statement to me saying uh terry told me that Bob beats his wife, but forgets or leaves out or doesn't even register it was a chess. Because how do you even determine the proximity of the two? You you could get that from you can get that from Terry, you know, giving the entire scenario, but it will still be hearsay because there is no way of verifying uh, that that Terry was talking about beating his wife. As in physically beating his wife or beating his wife at chess unless you get sally to come into the court and says no i was talking I, I was saying terry was beating his wife at chess and that would put the old man to bed that's how you go around the hearsay rule so that's an example of hearsay being wrong in of yourself and the other part which is basically or not fact which is basically what she says is again outstanding because hearsay could like this is why and i believe this is the exact why that hearsay was even implemented in the first place because there's no way to prove any of the things people say is fact let me give an let, let, let me give an an example um going off the example of the police officer let's say um you have a computer and you have a clock for example I'm bringing these two examples to say this exactly. 
Now, imagine the scenario of a clock. When this person that said that that said that the officer killed uh, that that said that the officer told her uh, that um, that the person killed this person. Now that would be hearsay. But if she said I was at the scene at two o'clock, and the the police was arriving, and they were getting ready to uh, and they were taking statements from everyone. This wouldn't be hearsay. The reason why it wouldn't be hearsay is not only did she not say, did, did this person, not she or he, he or whatever, not only this person did not say, oh, um, the officer in this scenario is telling me something, but the clock is telling me something. And that corroborates with the police officer's time or whatever. So if he says, the clock told me that it was two o'clock, that wouldn't be hearsay. It sounds crazy. It sounds out of you know our place but a clock telling you what time it is is under the exact definition as hearsay because it's telling you something the same thing with a sign the same thing you, you that you look at and you are told a specific information that is hearsay but what makes it non-hearsay or what makes it an exception is the fact that the clock or the time were created by away from f human influence and it was it's all automated so the signs were were made in mass um at a factory away from human influence all humans did was write on the on the on the sign and they weren't writing to prove anything per se they were just writing to show what to do so they meet the exception and it was all automated so therefore it's free and most importantly this signs and this clock cannot come into court to testify that um that this happened or this happened it can never happen so all that would happen is it wouldn't come into as hearsay or anything like that it would just meet the next layer of of uh, rules of evidence which would be whether it's probative value or prejudice uh, or, or prejudicial um to the person that's different that's completely different from hearsay per se now the same example with a pc pc is you know is automated as well computer is automated etc and but when writing word documents excel document whatever it might be these are all not automated this is human influenced so he, that document as long as it's typed and printed out will be considered as hearsay on its own and it doesn't matter what it is it could be the police it, like, like like even if um like ov obviously i'm not using the handwritten statements example here i'm only using the computer example even if you went to the police station or your insurance company and wrote down your statement of what happened at an event etc those things that you write down to the police are assumed as truth if i'm not mistaken and therefore it would um it would not be assumed to be you offering it to prove the truth of something it will be assumed it will be taken in court as a previous inconsistent statement that you would make or so, or something like that that would be the other exception of of uh, hearsay so which goes back which i should go back to the rules of hearsay which is number two which is a, a party offers in evidence to prove the truth of the matter asserted in the statement so that's the second rule of hearsay bringing this all in with all of this considered this is how we determine what hearsay is and what hearsay isn't it's quite that simple and it's quite defined in the us now keep in mind that rule 801 defines what ESA is. If you if we go was to go into the UK and look at where ESA is mentioned, it would be the Criminal Justice Act 2000 and, uh, 2003. It doesn't actually define exactly what ESA is. In chapter 2, section 114, it just gives you outlines of admiss admissibility of hearsay evidence. And here uh, what section 114 it says in criminal proceedings a statement not made in oral evidence in proceedings is admissible as evidence 
of any matter stated. Now, I'm a very big stickler for words and the words that's been used, um, um, that's been used to um, describe or pin into a law. And I asked this to a, a UK barrister, and we seem to be in somewhat an agreement that the word of any statement is completely different and it's broader um, because and the words he used was because multiple assertions while the UK allows for multiple assertions within a statement to come in whereas the UK it where, sorry whereas the US is more on a certain statement a certain matter and they deal with that so that they so they don't concern the multiple the multiple assertions etc they just deal with that that's what makes it a little bit different and um and from this understanding is why i i i'm not sure about others i think others may share the same view as i do but that's why i think that hearsay rules in the uk are a much are much more relaxed than the us you also got to consider the extra layer of the us in which that um in which that when it comes to citizens' rights, the U.S. literally have a, 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 a constitution that they are, uh, are given to their citizens and this constitutional rights applies to them. And there is no way, and there are even some case law that actually allows, uh, I think, the Sixth Amendment to even take precedence, even when it, um, and allow an exception for in the case of admissions or admitting to a murder um it depends on the uh, on the case law itself but these admissions differs a little bit from the way that, that the uk deals with admissions etc because this one because this case law, i believe it was britain versus america um it actually um dismissed um the admissions of a co-conspirator co which which is in line with federal rules of course, this is different because they do actually allow admissions to come in um, per rule um, 803, I believe. They do actually allow admissions, but it really depends on the circumstance um, that it that, that is being allowed in. So, I believe in the Bruton case, uh, the person pleaded the fifth and, and, um, and the sixth amendment kind of took president here and whatever admissions was made was seen as prejudice to the person that took the fifth so they didn't allow it to come in for for example so you may disagree or, or agree whatever it might be but those are the little nuances around the rules that come in here so why is this re relevant in the uk the reason why all of this is kind of relevant is because in the uk the way civil cases in in terms of debt v heard in the way civil cases is handled is much different from the US. In the US you get the right to demand jury trials anywhere really. While in the in the UK you have to re request it from the judge and the judge has to decide whether they want to give it to you or not. Whereas in the in the US it's your right to actually request one and it's rarely you know denied. So there is those there is that little difference but there is also it doesn't mean that they that the uk doesn't follow the rules of hearsay strictly it's just really relaxed and i believe the reason why it's relaxed so much is because of section 114 clause 1d which basically says the court is satisfied that it is in the interest of justice if if it not if for it to be admissible i think they use that rule to basically allow whatever evidence would go to prove the case so in the case of Deb v heard you saw the therapist notes come into the uk case you can interpret that as pursuit of justice that they come in because they're trying to get uh the son civil justice whether they have the the right to print what they've said the same way with with um with amber heard's diary entry she was her, um their witness um uh and who was uh, i believe it's called star witness or or key witness in, in in the in the uk which is somebody who was actually at the scene of all these things happening the rules 
pretty much change when you are a defendant versus when you are a witness. A defendant, um, a defendant is very limited to what they can say, um, to what other people told them. Whereas a witness, whether it's involved with a plaintiff or a defendant, they can literally um, repeat. They can literally repeat what they've heard um, from the defendant or the plaintiff. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't be hearsay per se because it's coming from the plaintiff or the defendant in this case. So that's the difference here. That uh, and that's what I believed Aid hated the son a lot in them winning that case because their defendant was actually a witness to the, the case and was not on the defendant stand. Um so it wouldn't um so and this is where I gotta cut the judge a bit of some slack. I know a lot of people that support Depp disagree with the decision. Even I do disagree, but I do understand the legal um the legalities around it that would have led to him making those decisions like for, like for example in section 118 um um clause 5 i'm not, I'm not sure I, I, I have to say these things but um in section 118 which is in section 11 um clause 1b which says any rule of pre of law preserved by section makes it admissible so now we go to the section 118 and five is any rule of law re re relating to the admissibility of of, uh, of confessions or mixed statements in criminal proceedings. I believe when it came to com to confessions and all of that, he knows that he's got to place weight on any admissions or confessions that comes from the witness is uh, um, themselves or the person that's in question. I think he knows that, but at the same time. I felt when he got to the other area, he didn't say this, by the way, because his judgment was was very different. He didn't place the weight on the audio tapes that had, that came in from Johnny Depp's side, which is one what, what, what I'm referring to. He didn't place the evidence on on his side, which basically was her admitting to um, physically beating him and doing all those things. He didn't place weight on those audio recordings and opting for her state for um for her statements in court etc i believe and he he didn't define why he did this as outside outside of i'm going to give her um i'm going to examine her statements on the roof he didn't say oh it offered more prejudicial value than pre than 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 probative value he didn't make any of that analysis so here is just what i'm thinking I personally think he, he probably thought if I was to have, uh, it probably would have been prejudicial to the witness to have the witness credibility um, threatened like this. Um, if I was to not hear the witness that was actually at, at, at the scene out. Remember, she was not a defendant, so it's very different. And the credibility of, of witnesses really differs if they're at the scene or not, from my understanding of the law. So if a witness is saw something from across the road but wasn't actually there they would whatever they say would not be as scrutinized in my opinion as as uh, sorry whatever they say would be scrutinized a lot more than someone who was actually at the scene um giving evidence or giving testimonial evidence in this case so that's why i think that the judge went that way not saying it's right or wrong. I personally think whatever contemporaneous um, audio comes in or anything that's contemporaneous, um, as long as it satisfies the hearsay rule, should be um, should be allowed in for in terms of probative value unless it's really gross and it's not relevant. Like, like, like for example, um, Amber Heard's DV arrest um, would have been more prejudicial. And this is where I believe... I believe they got the hearsay rule right in the states. So when it comes to like contempor contemporaneous audio or, or anything that's contempor contemporaneous, as long as you satisfy the hearsay rule per se, and and it goes down to probative value and prejudicial value, as long as it is probative, I mean, usually ten nine times out of ten, it usually is probative 
but it can also be prejudicial as long as you're able to survive that i think it should come in um so i i personally didn't understand why a judge wouldn't place weight on that because but i'm guessing it probably was prejudicial to the witness and this is where i'm gonna turn to the uk to the us case because in the us case she wasn't a witness she was a defendant so she had to so a lot it changed from here because she wasn't supplying evidence to these um to anyone else but the court she was supplying because the reason why i put it like that is because in the uk case she was supplying it to the son who supplied it to the court if you understand where i'm coming from and the best example of this is ben king who appeared in the u.s case and he supplied his evidence which was the pictures he took of the australia scene um where she said that she was bottle you know you know assaulted um but was ass uh, assaulted in a you know dairy end. and basically when ben king brought the picture she said that you know it, it had blood on it there was nothing that would show that this picture was you know hearsay or anything like that it was at the scene and ben king in my opinion was just a witness that was at the scene so he would be he, was, he wasn't a witness that what that witnessed the entire thing he just took a picture of a bottle for insurance purposes so this is very different because he was the house manager etc et he had to um write them up the bill so this was very interesting to see because the pictures he provided had nothing to do with either party per se um even though he was paid by uh by johnny depp as his australian estate manager etc the pictures he provided wasn't to show that there was no blood on it or whatever it was just to to show these were the pictures i i, I took at the scene he wasn't beholden to give it to the defendants as they tried to say the same way that amber heard wasn't beholden to give anything to the plaintiffs she gave it to ngn ngn gave it in to evidence the same way that ben king gave his evidence in um in to the plaintiffs and was introduced when um when it was you know his turn to testify so i again i did not see anything wrong with this it's something that is pretty much it happens it happens witnesses have their own evidence that that they can produce to the case without having to disclose it to anyone else you know what i'm trying to say they they're not subject to discovery themselves so that's my understanding of it so now like i said in terms of of both cases when you look at it from the uk us perspective the main difference as is is and always will be whether she was a defendant or witness or not it doesn't matter what the hearsay rule is because as a witness a therapist note would be quite important because you witness the thing you went to the therapist and you told the therapist what happened where the rules of hearsay is completely different from another another, another set of rules it is quite understandable that multiple assertions of hearsay would be considered and i think there is one part of the criminal justice acts that does play a massive role and that's section 115 and that is statements matters as stated so he says um uh 115 clause 2 says a statement is any representation of fact or opinion made by a person uh, by whatever means and includes a representation made in a sketch photo fit or pictorial form number three uh a matter stated is one to which this this chapter applies if and only if the purpose or one of the purposes or or of the person making a statement appears to the courts to have been to cause another person to believe the matter or to cause another person to act or a machine operate on the basis that the matter is as stated so from what i understood of the this could be relaxed as well i don't know but i think this is what it defines statements as and i think this is not just beholden to the criminal system i think this is beholden as well to the civil system but there's no way of me actually showing that um but i don't see i'm only saying that because i don't see it limited to criminal 
Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, let me do it, uh, like criminal proceedings, like admissibility of evidence was, um, does say in criminal proceedings. It doesn't really say in civil proceedings as well, you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's a bit different. Maybe I'm misinterpreting, misinterpreting the words here, but that's why I understand it. So when it comes to that, I would take a gander and speculate a little bit and say that the therapist note coming into the UK case was a bit more justified per their rules in the sense that um, it may not have caused the person to believe, or the therapist in this case, to actually believe what Amber Heard was telling her, if that makes sense. So because it didn't cause them to believe this was actually happening, uh, it allowed the rules of, it, it allowed the therapist note to come in that is very you know that's my understanding of it and as therapists you 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 understand you are supposed to you know listen to your client you may or may not believe exactly what happened but you are supposed to listen to your client if you do believe your client or something like that then i don't know how to explain it but on the face of it from what i'm understanding of, of the rules and why this note was allowed into the in in, in, in into you in into the UK, you could argue that the, that it that the, that the therapist believe none of it, and therefore it came in, because um, I'm not sure if there's a rule that therapists have to report abuse if it was in the in the UK or anything like that, but I do believe, and I'm extrapolating a little bit here. I do believe because the uh, police officers didn't make. Um, because the judge leaned in on the fact that there was no contem contemporaneous made by the police officers, so therefore they, he didn't place much weight on the police officer's evidence, um, could be applied here because there were therapist notes being made um, in this case. So because the therapist notes were being made, um, it doesn't mean, uh, it means that the incident did happen um, more or less but because a therapist is not beholden to actually believe their client for example uh because they because if you believe your client you will probe further for like you know and i'm going a little bit of the tangent a little bit here but hear me out let's take for example the the us case ex exceptions to the rule um exceptions to hearsay which is a statement made for medical diagnosis or treatment it says a statement that is made a it's made for and is reasonable pertinent to medical diagnosis or treatment and describes medical history, past or present symptoms or sensations, their inception or their general clause. I do believe that with this idea, I think, I, I haven't seen it in the Criminal Justice Act, but I think they have a similar idea. Um, if this was happening with a clinician, for example, where they're giving this the... Um, the clinician will have to believe them. Um, will have to would have to believe them for it to come in, if that makes sense. And that would make an exception in the states because the the clinician has to offer the right diagnosis for what they have said. I believe the same exists in the UK if you are trying to diagnose uh, someone of something. However, the inherent believe that the person is telling the truth or not with a therapist because they're not really diagnosing anything cannot be seen so therefore can this person cause this person to believe this this case no it, and it's just this little nuance that allows this evidence in in my own view compared to the state which wouldn't even entertain it because and i'm going to go back to the state and just um finish this video off you just have to look back on the rules of hearsay which is rule 801c which says a party offers in evidence to prove the truth of the matter asserted in that statement so you have to put yourself in a scenario and put away all bias put away everything that may conflict you in any way and just think what scenario can you bring this evidence in to that wouldn't a therapist evidence uh, if we're being specific that wouldn't show that you're trying to prove the truth of something happening what scenario could it possibly be depending on your answer let me know in the comments and to also go back to my previous example about the uh, uh, human versus automated 
imagine a scenario where there's a, a game, for, for example, and the game tells you to go and kill somebody. Now, would that be hearsay if you went out and killed and kill somebody and came back and said the game told me to go and kill somebody? Would that be hearsay? I personally don't think it is because a game is automated full fuel with scripts and what you interpret whatever you've read on there to go and come in and act cannot be considered hearsay but let me know what you think if it's actually hearsay if you went and, and killed someone and and said the game told me to to go and kill someone because re regardless games re requires humans to type in the scripts as well as uh, the dialogue for each characters that that that's being created so you get the idea and that's why i'm bringing it to you like this with all things considered when you look at it from this way you can see why the therapist notes came in in my honest opinion you can see why the diary came in and you can see why the undrafted email came in and i believe the us has a stricter rule because of they um the, because of how the jewish will be impacted hearing these statements i believe there is one more example and she's from canada uh she's she she's from canada um uh, and leave her alone is from canada so the last example i'm going to give is i asked a canadian lawyer what the difference is between the uk system and the us system i'm not going to put any you know, I, I, it was through dm so i'm not going to put I'm gonna put blanks on the uh, on on their name, but the uh, the lawyer told me that hey, um, the lawyer told me which cannot be hearsay because he's not offering the truth to prove that it's actually that uh, that hearsay is this or that. He's just saying what differences is between the U.S. and the U.K. systems. Uh, sorry, the, between the U.S. and the and the Canadian systems. So what he said was they're very similar. Um, in terms of um, in terms of the wording, the rules, etc., they have a clear definition for it. The difference is just the exceptions and what's accepted. Like, like for example, uh, ancient documents or uh, all all of those things. This is a conversation really that was had. Again, cannot be hearsay because he's not proving what hearsay actually is. He's just saying this is what is the understanding between both systems and i think if you can understand it like that you will go a long way to actually understand what hearsay actually means and why in a lot of scenarios in the us you would not have a for example a diary come in um and it's very dependent on the contents of the diary but the main idea in the in the us and all these documents is that it is very self-serving at best um and there is one case as well that i would just like to bring up quickly and is the subramane case uh subramane versus malay uh, which is now called as malaysia subramane was going to be sentenced to death for being in position with ammo um as part of the chinese communist party um that was uprising sorry chi chinese communist rebel sorry that was that, that was rising up at the time so he was cool with it and he was about to be sentenced and he got sentenced to life to um to he got, he got sentenced to death basically and he appealed it and he argued that uh that what he said that it can't be hearsay what happened because um and he argued that what happened was that uh was that when they when the rebels came to him um he said that they told him that that he has to join um their cause otherwise he is going to die as well as other people so this in my opinion this it was regarded as non-hearsay it's not hearsay at all because he's not going to prove the truth of anything it's not causing anyone to believe um it, no matter how you look at it there is no way you can look at it and say he's trying to describe um the use of ammo uh or the reason he's killing somebody killing so many people etc he's just giving you an overview of what went on it is more probable that this happened 
because they're trying because because you can because again with multiple people with if you were to inquire from multiple people if uh, and I'm extrapolating a lot a lot here but to give an example if you were to inquire from multiple people around the time what may have happened with the Chi with the Chinese rebels this would have most likely been the case that they were going around telling people hey if you didn't do this etc and but even with that example aside it brings in the other layer of the law which is duress which is basically anything that you do under duress is cannot be considered as you know your fault or your actions as you know in this case would be to, to whatever you say or do under duress cannot be considered as the truth because there is no chance for you to actually assess the situation you you're not going to be like no i'm not going to lie to save you and then get killed you could say that but if you were to lie uh you know to save your life it would be understandable that you did not mean to lie or it was um that what you said was was a lie and this is what you mean after you're out of this of the situation so i'm just giving a loose example but that's what i understand from it so maybe again i've done all this video to kind of go through all of all of what leave her alone actually says because she says that because i support depth that i don't understand what hearsay is so you know other depth supporters don't understand what hearsay is so i just thought i made this quick video to show that i actually don't understand what hearsay is and it's up to you whether you agree with the video or not it's up to you whether you actually um understand hearsay yourself or not but i will always say this if if you were on trial and then you had someone that was never at the scene called charles and then this person accuses you of you know in this case beating up your wife and then the person said charles told me that he was beating up your wife w would you want that evidence to come in personally if the person was not on the scene or was on the scene i'll leave that to you you know as well as the other examples that i gave you know i'll leave that to you let me know in the comment section whether you would you whether you would call hearsay on on this one or whether you would just be silent so that all verifiable evidence can come in <laughs> and i would <laughs> i would love to, i would just love to close out with this tweet but yeah um it is what it is in, in, in the end of the day thank you so much for, for 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 tuning in i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you did learn something from the video um i i wasn't going to make it this this long but thank you so much for all those that did watch this far into the video um thank you so much for taking the, the, the time out of your day to even watch the video if you'd like or didn't like the video Thank you so much for even giving me a bit of your time. Take care of yourself and have a wonderful day. Do not go off and harass anybody or anything like that. Be kind, be nice, be human, be you. And I'll see you on the next video that we have in store. Take care of yourself and stay blessed.